is it dangerous right now to stop Congress from doing a deal on immigration? Should we be waiting for you to get back into office? You can't do a bad deal. The deal they're looking at is terrible. They're going to allow part of the deal. You know, they're not releasing the papers. That's always a bad sign. Nobody can get a hold of the papers. They said they're going to release it Friday night. That is Maria Bartiromo, who is about as in the bag for Donald Trump as anyone technically in the news. But she's asking, I think, and at least from a certain point of view, a good question. Donald Trump says, as all Republicans do, the border is in chaos, American lives are on the line. Oh, Also, let's do nothing about it for a year. And Trump has been very clear, as clear as many Republicans in both the House and the Senate, that this is a political thing. They do not want Joe Biden to be president when some deal is reached, even if it's a deal that is incredibly slanted towards Republican priorities. All of that is irrelevant. This would be a big win from the point of view of Republicans, but set that aside because it would help Joe Biden. So from that perspective, Maria Bartiromo is asking, I think, a good question in that she probably doesn't want Donald Trump to do something that is gonna make him and the Republicans look really bad, if they can be blamed for continued chaos at the border. Arguably, she's also trying to stress how dangerous the border is there and trying to you know, buttress the Republican talking points about the fact that this is the biggest problem facing America. But, but I do think it was a good question. I wanna to turn to a little bit more of Trump's response to it. What does he do when there's a little bit of actual pushback? Let's jump to this. Why weren't they releasing it earlier than that? Because it's no good and it's no good for the Republicans. And frankly, any Republican that signs it should be ashamed of himself or herself. For starters, they want to allow 5,000 people to come on to our country like, on a daily basis, they said, on a daily basis, 5,000 people, that's a lot of people. Why would Lankford be agreeing to that? I don't know, he's a very nice man, maybe Mitch McConnell. I don't think there's anything you can do that's worse than a bad immigration deal, and they're doing a bad deal. You're better off not having a deal than having a bad deal, and that's what they're negotiating. 5,000, that's a, that's a lot of people coming in. Look, I had the safest border, the most secure border in our country, in the history of our country, and now we have the worst. We have the worst border in the history of the world. There's never been a border that allowed millions of people to come into a country, even a third world country, that fight them off. I always say with sticks and stones, that fight them with sticks and stones. They're destroying our country I, I and it's not sustainable. So he ends that response by once again invoking that we should be using violence to stop the migrants from crossing the border. We're, we're used to that at this point. That's just baked into if he gets in charge, there's gonna be violence against the migrants. So enjoy that America. But importantly, he makes some specific claims there. Much of what he said is not specific. It's vague, we need a good deal, not a bad deal, don't take a bad deal, aren't I nuanced? But he does make a specific claim that they're allowing 5,000 migrants into the country each day. That is not true. And it's a real shame that there were no journalists in the room to potentially fact check that. Considering, by the way, that this is a false claim that he has already been making for multiple days. That is not at all what the deal says. Maria Bartiromo knows that, but she's not going, she pushed back slightly by asking if it was dangerous to block the deal, but she's not gonna like contradict him. That's not what it does at all. They're doing all sorts of new border enforcement. What they're saying is if the number of contacts with migrants on a single day exceeds 5,000, not that they're let into the country, then they crack down even more hardcore. That's not the beginning of the enforcement. That's like a hyper locked down version of the enforcement. He maybe knows that, maybe not. He's a dullard, ignorant and incurious, I don't know. But she knows better and she's doing a disservice to her audience by not correcting him on that. But Brett, what do you think? Is, yeah, it, is it dangerous to, to try to block this deal? Uh, is it dangerous to try to block this deal? For I don't him see politically. The, I don't or, see that. In terms of the actual state of the border, what do you think? This all depends on what people do about it, right? Like the, you know, the Oklahoman reports vis a vis Lankford's uh, proposed plan he's about to sign off on that they report that in December there were 10,000 crossings a day. And so if it gets to half of what it's been, we should get really vigilant, is the argument of this new deal. Trump is completely disingenuous. And when I say, like, it depends on what we do. It's it do are people actually going to call him out for what it what he's doing? I mean, the very clear thing that's happening now is that America voted for Joe Biden because they were tired of Trump's nonsense. And to a large extent, a lot of moderates were like, let's just have government work again. 
And according to that narrative, this border deal is exactly that. It is Democrats who control the Senate and Republicans who control the House and a Democratic president overcoming their adversity, you know, the, the, the differences between them and coming to a deal. That's one thing Trump does not want to happen. He doesn't want any legislative quote wins for Biden whatsoever, specifically on issues that Trump himself has tried to claim. If Biden is like, yeah, I got a deal that cut illegal immigration in half. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, whatever, however he wants to paint Whatever's. it. That wouldn't be a genuine explanation of it, but he could send people out to be like, we cut the influx of migrants in half thanks to my decisive action. And then he didn't, Trump definitely doesn't want that. What Trump, his other option, I'm sure he just doesn't understand, is that he could say, I'm already being the president, by the way. I'm helping the Republicans behind the scenes get that deal that is just a yeah. Republican deal. It's another option, but he's too stupid to understand it. All he's doing he's is selfish. saying 5,000 too much. 100%. I, and I will remind everyone, by the way, um, you know, and this is true of any level of number of crossings or whatever. If it was 5,000, it's not 5,000 people cross the border and then they're in here. And then the next day, 5,000 new people cross the border and then they're in here. And you do that every day. That's not how it works. You've never, you never hear the numbers of people who cross the border the other way. There are people who cross the border on a daily or weekly basis basis that do work in one area or shop in another area. It's not net every day. They don't know that or they don't care. I don't know. Anyway, and, I want to turn to just really what? quick. The argument about the border is that, oh, you have these migrants come in, they take our jobs and they do horrible things to people. The answer is no, no, that's just not true. The average yeah. migrant commits less crime than the average American. And I know that's wildly reductionist, but it's true. And then the government, the U.S. just added 353,000 jobs in January, which is bigger 100%. than anyone had ever um, thought they would. So what Biden's technically killing it. If he can get one like messenger out there to communicate that, he's going to win yeah. the election. We don't need to tell our audience about that. They all saw it being widely reported on Fox News this morning. <laughs> I'm 